anyways, in my opinion. we're going live here. Get off the camera. Test, testees. Get some pizza. Test, testees, test cores. This damn chair out of the way here. What is up? Fuck are you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who the fuck? Are, where are we at? We're back. What is up, ladies and gen gentlemen? <laughs> Jenny men. Jenny men. Jenny men. <laughs> the age of not defining genders. They are all uh, Jenny men now. Jenny men. Again. Jenny men. That's Jay. a new one. Wow. Yeah, Jenny men's a thank new God one. Thank God for Sundays. But yeah, thank God. What is up? Fishing Elephants, we are back here. We are back. Welcome, Familia. Yes, we are back with another edition of Fishing Elephant Sunday morning countdown. Uh, as we are kicking it off, we got the boys here. We got Lane, we got Sig, we got myself, and we do have a couple of special guests if they want to jump in the camera right now. We are introducing <laughs> Mr. In. Tyler Young, Mr. Andrew Corbin. Corbine? Corbine. Corbine, Mr. Andrew Corbine. Corbine. Tyler is the uh, fantasy commissioner in one of the fantasy leagues I play in, and Andrew... <laughs> He's my most hated fantasy rival. We got him up here from Shadron, Nebraska here this weekend. Uh, okay. Andrew, want to break down our uh, rivalry a little bit here? Playing in the league last year, it was kind of a two-man league. It was myself and my, the gentleman to my <laughs> left here. We we're playing in the championship game. Uh, I believe you were up by, like, what was it, like 75 points? I was up by, uh, I was up by 63 uh, going into the final game. And all you had left was Stefan Diggs and Josh Allen <laughs> playing against... Of course, my Patriots as well. And uh, J.C. Jackson uh, taunted Stephon Diggs, and then he decided to torch him for three <laughs> touchdowns, 150-some yards. You dropped 78 points, and I lost the fucking league on that. Game. I lost yeah. two playoffs. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Against his own squad, too. God team. damn it. And then starting off this year, man, stat production. I, I, that, that was tough. Oh, so, so, so. Her daddy had a spank you. Oh, man. yeah. <laughs> so, backstory on this here. So, we've been talking shit all offseason after that championship game. So, my name in this league was Zach Wilson's stepdad. Something I once aspired to be in life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on draft night. And uh, on draft night, I was hoping to be that, all right? So, but uh, anyways, and so <laughs> after he beats me by one point last week, changes his name to Cole Blenner's stepdad. I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right. So after the shellacking last year, and I don't think a one-point win is, you know, an elevation in the family tree, so I just changed it to Andrew Corbine's real dad. Sure enough, after stat correction came out, we all know who dad is. So. Still, still <laughs> yeah. big popper. Yeah. Right. Still big popper right here. Just so. looking down bad over there. <laughs> How bad was the correction? It was two one, points. 
It was two points. It was ESPN failing to do <laughs> math somehow. And Just got so his hopes up. It turned a one-point <laughs> loss to a one-point win. And it was literally was, a swinger. The worst part was they didn't even tell me about it. I was trying to brag to my friends about this one-point <laughs> win. I was flexing at work. I'm showing everyone. Like, Week no, one, one, and he's happy one. as ever. And I log in, and I see that you decided to put you up by one. I was like, there's Just no Just heartbroken. <laughs> one-point loss. Hello, circus. And then when I saw Andrew Corbine's real dad, I was like, this, that, that's this, tough. Yeah. That's <laughs> so it has been a tough one. It's going to be a long season. season. I'm getting you. Oh, I know it. It's going to be a good season. It's going to be a good season. It's going to be a good episode. He said he's fixings. Yeah. He's oh, coming. He's, he's, fixings. Coming <laughs> he's fixings. He's coming for it. He's fixing. No, for some right. reason, <laughs> uh, I'm not worried. <laughs> I'm not worried. God damn it. You know, let's no, just go by oh, speed I'm here. Let's come. just go by speed. It's Tom Brady versus Henry Ruggs in a race here. Who are you going to oh, take? Yeah. I mean, Tom Brady. No, if we're going yeah, strictly yeah, by the jersey, all right? Even without strictly. the jersey, I think I'm running with Cole, all right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I could take a Max Crosby there. Oof. Hey. <laughs> yeah, we had some ballers. Mad uh, Max. We had some nice. ballers week one. Um, I mean, yeah, we can kind of drop that. I think Max would be my baller, obviously, for week one. Uh, um, Chandler Jones is another one kind of on the list. Five sacks, two forced fumbles. I mean, the man was, uh, mine, he was a machine, mine honestly. Mine would be Kyler Murray, hands down. He's making an MVP run this season. That's actually kind of my... Yeah, Sig, who's your hot baller this week? This week? Scary Terry. Scary Terry. Oh, yeah. God. Ooh, on the Monday night or on he's, the Thursday night game, too. Kind of reminds me like a mini DeAndre Hopkins. He's mm-hmm. he's quarterback proof. Well, he's also, he, dude, he's got that mentality. Like, anytime hands. you watch that's, Terry, like, that's what I'm saying. That catch yeah. that he's like, he's the like DeAndre. He's on the sideline. That would yeah. be incredible. Washington can still be someone to watch out for with Taylor Heineke at the helm. Uh, Tyler, who do you got for a baller from week one? Obviously, you mentioned Max Crosby. I stole that from you. I'm going to so. go, go obvious for baller from week one and say Jameis Winston. Uh, uh, yeah. New, new Hall of Fame coach in Sean Payton. And uh, obviously, coming off the LASIK surgery, the, the game was a blowout, but he looked like a fucking stud. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think my pick would definitely be Amari Cooper. Oh, Amari yeah. Cooper. He is, yep. You know, yeah. he's out to prove something this year. He mm-hmm. doesn't want to be seen as, you know, I feel like some, he's... T- some sort of, you know, underdog. Yeah. He knows who he is, and, you know, I know he's got C.D. Lamb. Michael Gallup's going to be out for three to six, though. So well, I can see Dak back. And Dak back, of course. Well, I think I even, I've even talked about this. Going into the season, um, I thought C.D. Lamb was going to take over, uh, fantasy-wise at least, as the wide receiver one for the Cowboys. Not by probably game plan, but by fantasy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think Amari came out, um, made me and stick my foot in my mouth, and a lot of different him. people. Uh, well, his route running is just second. Like, yeah. That's what just separates those top receivers in the league is the route running. Well, and he even said, he's like, coming into this year, he's like, I feel like I'm a one, I've been talked about like a 1B player. He's like, yeah. I'm going to change that. I want to be that. I am that dude. That DeAndre Hopkins, you know, that pinnacle, that Stephon Diggs. Like, what, like, because Stephon Diggs did, I'd say that broke out last year. Everybody kind yeah. of viewed him as like, all right, well, how's he going to be? Is he finally going to win? Yeah. How's he going to be by himself? And then he goes out, he's the top receiver in the league. I can, last see, year. I can see the Dallas wide receiver scheme going kind of a lot like it was when Cooper played for Oakland. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, you have Amari Cooper and you have CeeDee Lamb now instead of Michael Crabtree, but every week it's going to be one of them. Well, even Gallup, too. Yeah, Gallup yeah I mean. Junior. Yeah, no, yep. I'm just saying. But, I mean, even the weapons that they have, because you got the Zeke-Pollard uh, kind of speed, you know, power mix up there combo. Obviously, Zeke's not slow, but I was impressed by Pollard as, an, you know, an RB2. And Zeke's blocking. Yeah. People need for a watch or watch for Simi Fieko. Simi Fieko uh, out of Stanford is, if he can get it together, because he's really raw, but he was one of my guys to watch for the draft as far as wide receivers go. If he can if he can kind of get it together as far as route running, and as far as, uh, you know, keeping his hands consistent. They I mean, he's got all route, the tools. They said his routes got a lot better in camp. Well, I mean, that's yeah. That's start from that. He was playing on the second team for the most preseason. Too. That's why if you got a good coaching staff, man, you can get a lot of those raw college players and coach them up. Like Jason Awe did not have a single sack in college last year, and I think he already has two on the year. I know he had one against Derek Carr on uh, Monday night, so sure. or one on the year. So, But our boy DJ from October Thread does agree with Lane that Kyler knows the breakout player. No. Well, shout out DJ oh, yeah. from uh, shout out Thread DJ. October. Okay, I thought Let's I saw that comment, but I wasn't yep. sure. Yep. Shout out. Kyler's about to ball out. Yes, I just bought, I bought one of his rookie cards, too, so I need that hold up. <laughs> Go up. Well, um, yeah, so, I mean, I think I'm going to kind of run down the episode here real fast. We talk some ballers here. We're going to be talking some disappointing players kind of throughout the episode. Next segment is literally going to be called Give Me a Break. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about teams. Which week one team kind of concerned you? Which week one team uh, won? And, you know, do we believe in them? Do we not? So we're going to be talking about some teams. We're going to be giving a break. Uh, or do we believe in them? Do we believe against them? We'll see. And then the third segment is since we are absent, Mr. J. Syme here, and I ordered an entire Wizards get up. 
I guess I'm just gonna have to. I wear can't it. I have, fucking wait. I have the. I have the. It's documents gonna be the best thing ever. I himself, promise you. So I'm going to get off the screen for the give me a break segment. These I boys are gonna it. rock it out, and I will be back as the fantasy. Are wizard. we gonna be doing six corner? Yep. Twice? And then right okay. after fantasy wizard, uh, okay. we're gonna we're gonna okay. bridge with some betting advice, some hashtag not financial advice. Not. From from Mr. Lane brings plenty here, uh, and then I got a couple of bets to throw in from my boy Job. Shout out Job Um oh, yeah. And then yeah, we got six corners. So he's gonna sit down with the boys. We're gonna talk uh, talk a little topics, and then we're gonna end with some predictions here. And uh, I'm just gonna keep uh, fist pounding myself this yeah. entire time here. There we go. Let's pound it up, it's boys. Like, if you will. Let's pound it up. So Let's first, pound it boy, out. give me a break. I'm gonna go get a Kit Kat. We have Siglin on the screen talking about whether or not he's gonna give the Bills a break after a rough Week One against. With, uh, who the fuck they play? Cardinals? They play the Steelers. Steelers, that's right. Cardinals. For some reason, I'm thinking Cardinals. Titans, Titans against Cardinals. Titans, yeah. All right. Give me a break. These damn lights are bright. They are. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Oh, you missed, bitch. No comment. Literally cannot no see comment. that hoe coming through here. But, but, give me a break. We're going to be talking about the loss that the Bills had. They were... AFC championship contenders, and now they're losing week one against the Steelers' defense, who should be weaker. I think a lot of that is going to come up with the fact that they don't have a running game. They don't have a solidified running game. They don't have a guy back there. And that is a problem, and that is something that they need to break themselves. With that being said, also, we're going to focus on the Titans real quick. And you have Derrick Henry... You can't get me a touchdown from a yard out with three tries? Give me a fucking break. Ruined my fantasy. Took you in three leagues. Pick five. That's the way it fucking goes, baby. It's me. It's me. It's it. my luck. That's my break. It's it. That's my break. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and run the Eagles in real quick. Where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Hey! Oh, snag them! Give me a fucking break on the Eagles. Uh, these boys are about that life. I think they're going to fucking shit stomp the uh, 49ers today at home. They played Atlanta week one. Atlanta's great defense is not known to be great, obviously. With that being said, though, Philly did their job. That offensive line is finally fucking healthy along with that defensive line. Um, and I think that team all around is well invested in Jalen Hurts. They know they got something special going there. Uh, Devontae Smith is also fucking about that life. So... I think Philly's going to go out, start 2-0. and I think they might actually take second and or first in this division. So give me a break. I'm rocking with Philly. Let's go. All right, so give me a break on the Green Bay Packers. Uh, week one loss to the New Orleans Saints. Uh, blowout loss. Um, looking at... The reigning league MVP in the greatest quarterback of all time, Aaron Rodgers, throwing just over 130 passing yards in that game, uh, zero touchdowns and two interceptions before getting ultimately benched for Jordan Love. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give him a break on that one. It's been an interesting, long offseason for Aaron Rodgers, and he's going right back home for primetime football Monday night against divisional opponent Detroit Lions I'm expecting him to bounce back pretty strongly give me a break give me a break oh yeah Packers are gonna eat give me a break Bengals man Joe Burrow is a baller I mean gotta understand they don't have an O-line he's gonna take some hits but you know his decision to take his buddy from LSU that connection in the first week was seen and I think it's no doubt from here. Joe Burrow is going to be playing a lot of fun football. And even if they're playing in blowouts, you know they're going to have a good time. You know? Oh, yeah. Stack you know, on the, that, that overtime game was beautiful. Yeah. On the other side of that, give me a break, Vikings. You guys are not going to do anything this year. <laughs> that defense <laughs> that defense is atrocious. Let's be honest. You know, oh, you yeah. lose like seven of your guys. Yeah. You're bit, and then you get... 12 penalties on 165 yards. You lose the fucking game for you right there. Mike Zimmer is a defensive head coach, and, you know, yeah. you can't really have rely on Kirk Cousins to do too much right now. He did have a pretty decent game, but, you know, if you're a defensive head coach, you got to lock that stuff up. Give me a break, Mike Zimmer. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Love the energy. Right? Love the spike there. Titans. 
<laughs> All right, for the next best here fucking he, segment we're he. about to ever have. <laughs> here he, here he. Um, I'm getting crazy workaholics vibes right now. Oh, I yeah. hope some of you Hell can understand yeah. the reference. We need to um, get you a wizard probably right? one of the greatest episodes ever. I wish, I think you should just fucking do this every week. It is the best episode ever. We will have someone on like this every week. Yes. Jace, God so. bless. Welcome, the fantasy wizard. You shall not pass on third and goal from the one-yard line. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you, in very poor replacement from the actual Fantasy Wizard, myself, Cole Blenner, the Fantasy Wizard in uh, dress. I'm wondering how this looks right now. Your Is it is fantastic? What? Your beard's, Your beard's back. The beard's backwards. Oh, shit. I'm going to start a bunch of children. It's like when Santa takes off his beard. Right. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Santa, No. He's not real. Next you're gonna tell me the two fairy's real. It looks way better. Next you're gonna tell me there's cheese on. All right. So breaking it down, fantasy wizard Jace uh, spent all week before his anniversary conjuring up these fantasy articles. So what we are going to do is we're going to break down a little fantasy advice from the wizard himself. But first, let's talk a little bit of week one. First game of the season, Cowboys Buccaneers. Jace time says. Fantasy Wizard, Mr. Antonio Brown is still that dude. He's wide receiver one. Came out uh, in the last three weeks of the 2020 season. I mean, AB's workload increased a third. Uh, so the teams with receiving targets, uh, 20.1, you know, fantasy point average for those last games. He fired up a 21-pointer by average uh, scoring standards on the Thursday night opener. I have a little bit of hair in my mouth right now. That's really, really uncomfortable with that beard. This is why I grow just a chin strap. But, yeah, um, I think Gronk was a hell of a player as well. Um, you know, I sat him on my bench. I instantly regretted that as he went off for 25 in one of my leagues. Um, you know, I think Lamb's going to be productive. I think Gallup's going to be productive as well. But like we talked about in the beginning, Mark Cooper is still that dude. And Zeke will be fine. Uh, he says to have patience when it talks about Mr. Elliott. This offense just needs to get rolling. It just needs to go. So this works first time. There we go. Boom. Trust the Cowboys offense going yes. forward. Yes. Moving on, uh, talking about the second week one game. James Lo Robinson is no longer that workhorse, ladies and gentlemen. Last year, James Robinson led a terrible Jacksonville Jaguars offense. I believe he was like running back two or three yeah, in the league top last top, year. Yeah. He's not that dude this year. Even with Travis Etayin going down to injury, we thought he'd take a step back with that happening. I still don't think he's going to see the workload. Um, you know, 94% of the team's uh, rushing attempts last season were through James Robinson. That's not going to happen again this year. So, um, you know, I think another prediction that he has is uh, DJ Chark is going to be a receiver to own. I'm going to back this one up as well because DJ Chark and Brandon Cooks have been both disrespected in a lot of fantasy drafts. Just because DJ Chark is there with another fantasy breakout prediction, LaVisca Chenault, I think he's getting overshadowed a little bit. Brandon Cooks just because he's the only man on that island and he's a hell of a receiver. So, That's trust Chark, trust Cooks, in your fantasy league with the fantasy wizard advice. Moving on to the next segment, we have the Chargers and Washington. Uh, Eckler may not be like that guy that we thought. I think last week he took a huge step back as far as receiving production goes. I don't think he's going to be that guy out of the backfield this year receiving like we thought he was last year. And so a lot of the guys who were picking Eckler in rounds one or two are starting to regret it, and it's looking like he is not that guy this year. But it looks like Mike Williams might be your viable number two. Is this the year we kind of see Mike Williams regain that rookie year form? I think he is breaking out this year. It's looking like he's going to be a viable target there. Uh, you know, 13 targets in week one should be something consistently to watch going forward, especially with Keenan Allen's injury history. Fantasy Wizard says, pick up Mike Williams. Moving on here, um, he, has the, he has the Redskins on here too. Washington Football Club, sorry. Um, but we, they, they already played week two, so I'm not going to cover them. Uh, Seahawks, Colts, Chris Carson. The definition of consistency, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yeah, that sounds like sounds like butter and ranch dressing. It's like nothing. He's a wrecking ball. Typical he's just Seattle there. workhorse. He's all the time. He's a typical Seattle workhorse. You saw that out of Marshawn for years. I think for them to back to back that with finding Chris Carson, it's a hell of a pickup. Um, I think Jonathan Taylor's taking that step forward. And I've been on this train since the beginning, boys. Tyler Lockett's going to be that dude this year. All right. Here, the man hasn't dropped a red zone Love catch it. his entire career. He has not dropped a red zone target his entire career. That was a catchable pass. So. Seahawks starting. But when we're talking about the Colts here, let's not forget the slap bet that Sigmund and I have. 
Yes. Yes, always going there. But I think you should tread carefully with Indy's receiving room. Uh, Carson Wentz is still getting to know the offense. He's still getting to know um, his weapons there. And while I think he has good weapons, I think the offense has great potential. I don't think you trust any single one option because it could vary from week to week. Outside of Jonathan Taylor, who's going to really run that offense? Still today? missing the first first one. Yep. So apparently, from camp reports, he has a really good rapport with pass rush. Getting more uh, beard in my mouth here. It's cool. I'm dating an Amazonian, so I'm used to having hair in my mouth. It happens. Ooh. It's fucking everywhere, dude. <laughs> well, not like that. Jesus. <laughs> her hair touches her. Chill. Ass, right? oh. Chill. Yeah, chill. Oh. Yeah, she's probably not being, but she could be right now. She's not happy again. with me. Yeah. It is a Sunday morning, yeah. bro. She thinks I'm cold. Yeah, bro, she a bartender. She's trying to go to work right now, right? She's like, how the fuck my life? sleeping yeah. in the studio tonight. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> stay there, bitch. I still got my own place. Get the fuck out of here. Bitch. I, said, I, said, I know, and I'm freeloading hoes. <laughs> the fantasy was it has his own layup. Oh, my God. God. Of course, you got a Oh, man. Shit, moving on here to the Jets and Panthers. Only real one I kind of have out of here, uh, besides Corey Davis really kind of being an elite receiver, proving to really be that number one guy in New York, CMC is still that dude. All right? He All right. put up the number one running back week, boys, without having a touchdown last week. So. I had him and Kyler one of my leagues. Ooh, he's still that dude. Corey Davis is an elite receiver. Moving on, we have that Bengals-Vikings matchup uh, that we talked about here. I think Thielen is still that receiver. I think Justin Jefferson, we're going to see a lot of up and down. This year, I think you're going to see um, – Honestly, a lot of what you saw about Stephon Diggs in Minnesota, you're going to see these 150.2 touchdown games, and then you're going to see him go for six catches, 49 yards. You know what I mean? You're going to see a lot of these up and down games. Uh, Thielen's kind of always the guy who's just been that eight catches, 100 yards, you know, motto of consistency. So I think he's turned into an Edelman there, kind of in a, you know what I mean? Just yeah. Just gets all I that. like that comparison Especially a lot. Especially with he's Justin Jefferson. with the hands. Like he's he's going to be a game changer. And the one thing I, uh, I also yeah. say is in every single one of my fantasy drafts, Justin Jefferson, and I am in nine leagues because I overbooked the shit out of him. Justin, not Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase fell in every single one of my drafts. I think he was drafted below ADP in almost every draft. If I can remember, I'd have to go back and check. But uh, people were really concerned about him dropping the ball. I think that uh, has been cured after week one. I was about it all the time. I'm like, dude, he hasn't played in a year. He's playing pro ball. He's adjusting to the speed of the game. We're going to see some uh, some you know concentration drops out of him. Be this class in general. But here's the deal. He's dropping the ball with three yards of separation. This kind of means something. It's the same thing with Amari, man. Once Amari kind of got his hands figured out after he left Oakland, he's been that dude in, in Dallas. Once again, I think Jamar Chase is a valid wide receiver option to start weekly at right. this point. So, fancy words of advice as I find my button? Start Jamar Chase. Moving on here, Cardinals, Titans, Murray fantasy quarterback number one. We already know that. We talked about that game. Uh, Tyler, why don't you go ahead and join me here for some fantasy talk on the Niners. Going on here right now. Let's go. So, Jimmy's getting the starter here, and it looks like Debo is returning to his 2019 form a little bit. Obviously, he had oh, yeah. issues last Love year, it. but I mean, everybody kind of thought, is it Ayuk? Is it Debo? Next to Kittle, who's the number one option? I think Debo came back and proved that he is that option. So there's there's a lot of question marks surrounding the Niners uh, as far as fantasy goes because Jimmy Garoppolo is their starting quarterback. He's going to be under center to start every game. But then next thing you know, they're going to get down to the red zone and they're going to scheme Trey Lance in there. So there's going to be a lot of touchdowns there. I'm really, as much as I love watching it live, I'm not trusting either 49ers quarterback in in fantasy relevancy. Uh, Running backs, Mostert's hurt getting surgery out for the year now and his uh the rookie backup we have elijah mitchell looked like a, a stud but we also just signed carry on johnson former detroit lion and someone to watch out too is um got trey sermon out of and Oklahoma. trey sermon yeah yeah former sooner healthy Ohio. scratch in week one but he's still on the roster he's and active this week. if we've if we've seen anything from the past couple of years as far as 49ers running backs go it's that every time you think it's one guy it's gonna be another um so. You know what the Shanahan's have that though, because let's remember Denver growing up. You had Terrell Davis, but then you had like yeah. these random right. guys that would come out of nowhere, like James Harrison, not the outside linebacker, but the running back. James Harrison had a game there. Then uh, they had just like different backs get like Clinton these eight hundred yards, Hillis. thousand yards. Yeah, Peyton Peyton Hillis, Hillis, um, uh, yeah, Clinton Portis was a guy who you know pulled out in Denver. Denver seemed to always have consistent, at least you know, success running yep. the ball, and it's going to be the same with. The same with Kyle as it was with Mike. As far as fantasy goes for the 49ers, uh, obviously you're always going to trust George Kittle because he's getting drafted as a top three running or top three tight end. Um, uh, Ayuk being a, a shutout in week one, uh, not bothering me at all. Ayuk is still a stud, still going to come back, and he's still going to 
uh, take over that spotlight as the number two. He's just, he'll be there. Uh, but outside of Kittle, if you're going to trust anyone right now, right this second, it's obviously Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel is a monster, and he is the uncontested wide receiver one in that entire offense. There you go. Oh, hitting the wand. Debo Samuel and George Kittle are locked. Ladies and gentlemen, resident Niners fan, rocking the high school mamba. Rocking the high school Woo! mamba, the double threes from Mr. Kobe Bryant there. Oh, all good. We can move her off if we need to be. So, here we go. Yep. Always some technical issues with the boys here. Always, always technical issues. But moving on here, we have Buffalo versus the Steelers. The Fantasy Wizard says Pittsburgh's defense is no joke going into the year. TJ Watt, highest paid lineman. I think we have several defenses. I think you featured one of them in this game. I think the Niners' defense is someone to watch out for. I think they got ahead last week and kind of started slacking a little bit. But more competitive contests, I think you'll see that team do well. New England, of course, has a great defense. There's some teams that to watch out for. Um, and I think Pittsburgh's, you know, one of them that some people considered, like they were ranked number one in a couple of leagues as far as defenses, but some people yeah. are starting to sleep on the defense. Let's not forget TJ Watt signed that massive extension. Even Minka Fitzpatrick. I mean, yep. is the new trend trading number one picks for defensive players? Because it might not. Uh, hey, the Bears hey, trade is out, but like hey, Minka seems to work out. On that line too. They got some solid bets. Yeah. Minka seems Joe to work Hayward out still, what. Uh, Cameron Hayward. Yeah, that's what Hayward's on that line. Yeah, so Pittsburgh defense, no joke. Uh, Najee kind of had a slow start, but uh, Fantasy Wizard is saying, don't panic, I'm Mr. Harris. Uh, moving on here uh, with the Eagles game. Let's talk some Eagles football here. Shout out to my boy Chris Lee. Hope you're doing well out there uh, as we as he is out of work right now. Um, the real Chris Lee. Yeah, the real Chris Lee. We've had him on uh, the Beers and Bullshit podcast. One of the homies, so uh, yeah. shout out to Mr. Lee. Okay. The Eagles were flying in week one. The boys Lane's got him in week two here. Uh, we'll talk about some picks later. We'll see who else has him. But Fantasy Wizard is saying you got to love some Jalen Hurts, but avoid some Zach Ertz. All right? So make it Hurts, but don't go with the Ertz. All right? <laughs> so he's talking about Jalen Hurts. I mean, he's a dual threat. Three touchdowns, 250 yards in week one here. Obviously, he can run the ball as well. Fantastic fantasy option. But I think we all know at this point the team has focused on Dallas Goddard going forward as – the tight end one for this organization doesn't mean that Ertz isn't going to get targets, but he's not going to have consistency. He's not going to play with that same, you know, kind of tight end one mentality that he has been playing with. And honestly, I'm still shocked that he's on the team myself. So, but moving on here, uh, I think another one was uh, he said Miles Sanders was impressive, but if you're looking for a good bench running back to pick up in case Sanders gets hurt, Kenneth Gainwell out of Mississippi State, their rookie running back, performed fantastically. He had a tutty last week. He looked good. Looked like he was hitting the hole sharp. He's going to be a good switch it up option out of the backfield there, kind of a little bit more powerful back to go with Sanders' speed. So, still I largely like, unknown in a lot of leagues. Yeah, very. Uh, dude, I picked him up off the waiver wire in one of the dynasty leagues. Like, no one drafted him in a 30 mm -hmm. round draft, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, in a dynasty round. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So, he says on the Eagles, that's where you got to go. But with the Falcons here, there was a man we talked about at the beginning of the year. I actually invested pretty well on him on a couple of teams. It's Mr. Calvin Ridley. It's looking like the ceiling is in jeopardy, but Kyle Pitts being involved a little bit more is probably relieving to some Pitts owners. Everybody thought Ridley was going to come in last year. He was the wide receiver one without Julio in the lineup. Uh, so everybody kind of thought that production would carry over, but it looks like Matt Ryan a little slow to start this year. Adding Kyle Pitts to the offense means another weapon. Ridley might not be that dude this year, but stay tuned because we don't know what's going to happen. Don't decide that off of a yep. week two matchup with exactly. Tampa Bay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely not with the week two matchup in Tampa Bay. Um, let's talk a little bit of uh, Colt Browns. Let's get Mr. LVP on the scene here. I'm gonna, Go I'm gonna get you the article here, and then I'm gonna fix this microphone because the wizard also does tech support. The wizard always. <laughs> so which one am I going over? I apologize. Uh, the uh, Bengal or the Browns Chiefs game. Oh, Browns Chiefs game. Obviously, Patty's that fucking dude. Is what it is. Um, I know we talked about it last week, too, though. I was expecting Cleveland to come out hot. Very, very, very respectable team um, on all levels. That defense and that offense with that offensive line and Chubb and Kareem Hunt, um, they're, they're tough to play with. So, and yes, yeah, shout out to our boy Josh. I was just replying to you, my bad. But he's saying go Broncos. I love you, Josh. But you know it's Chiefs all day. Um, I think you guys will definitely handle the Jags, but we'll talk about it again next week. With that being said, what Jace has in here is that Cleveland continues to get it done on the ground. Um, the Browns had another, de another devastating loss to the Chiefs. 
failed to throw a single touchdown in the air. I do want to note that with that being said. Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew did not play last week. Um, so I was expecting our defense, obviously, to not play on, on that high of a level. Um, he's a game changer, and he's the leader of our defense. So I was very impressed with our defense, kind of controlling that in the air. Clark, too. Yes. Oh, Clark's that dude. Chris Jones, Sack Nation, baby. Um, with that being said, though, Hunt and Chubb both did post about 5.5 yards per carry. I, with Hunt also seeing the end zone, obviously. Baker did still throw for 324, but that pick at the end, shout out Dirty Dan, forcing that interception to, to close that game for us. Dirty Dan Sorensen. Dirty Dan. That was the boy you shout out for the Super Bowl, too. Well, so, uh, also, yeah. when we played the Browns last year in the, in the playoffs, he actually made a huge play then, too, causing a fumble, actually, right before the, in the end zone, uh, getting causing us to get the ball back. So, we got some studs over there. You guys do. Our defense is low-key. Like you said, Frank Clark, Chris Jones. I think there's two Derek offenses Nottie. you can trust all year. Two offenses you can trust. It's going to be the Chiefs offense and going to be the one, Cleveland one. Browns offense. Oh, the one, yeah. When God even of EO saw. <laughs> We've been watching the Harry Potter movies at home. We're on Deathly Hollows now. Tito and I. Harry. So, yeah, hence the wizard. Joe, Joe did comment that. You're a wizard, Harry. You're a wizard, Harry. Shout out, Joe. We'll be going over your wizard's duel here shortly. So, appreciate you tuning in here, bud. I'm going to need my cell phone for that one because he texted me it over. So, moving on, Packers Saints. That was ugly. That was disgusting. But let's talk about Jambo. Let's talk about Jambo wins. Let's talk about Mr. Jameis Winston. From the ashes, he rises. The 30 30 man himself. Is stealing crab legs and he's dealing tutters out there. 148 yards, five touchdowns. Very disproportionate. Very disproportionate. Still no Mike Thomas. Yeah, still no Mike Thomas. But uh, the Saints getting it done. Uh, we kind of talked about Packers. We're going to give them a pass for now. We'll see how they play here in week two going into primetime on the Lions. Really easy recover game there. But, dude, get Adam Troutman while you can, all right? If you haven't picked out Adam Troutman, he's going to be tight in one for the Saints this year. Jameis Winston loves his tight ends. Obviously, he can throw touchdowns. Troutman's going to be a hell of a start this year. So the Fantasy Wizard says, pick up Adam Troutman. Do it. Win your leagues. Damn it. <laughs> Do it while it's still free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Uh, we're going to talk Denver here a little bit just because uh, the Giants kind of already played this week. Um, we'll be talking about Teddy uh, as far as one of these starters this week. I think Teddy's going to be a hell of a start going into week two, but I will be covering that in uh, our next Fantasy Wizards segment. But, I mean, Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams, I think you're going to get some yards out of that backfield. Denver is going to be a force to contend with. I think the question is, is can they keep this up every single week? But against the Giants, they look dangerous. Mm -hmm. I think they look dangerous, boys. Um, and I think going forward, you are going to see a much, much tougher Denver team on offense than we saw last year. Because last year, I think everybody can kind of agree, even with missing Von Miller, that defense was still stout. The offense is really just the issue. And so if Denver can really kind of drive through that ceiling as a Raiders fan, I don't like it, but I do have uh, kind of high potential and high hopes for them as a football fan overall. Next, Andrew, if you want to come on here, let's talk a little bit of uh, Dolphins and Patriots. Obviously a squeaker. Squeaker <laughs> last week. A little squeak ski. A uh, little, little squeaker last week here. Um, oh, man, something that's about tough. one-point losses. Yeah, some oh, about one-point okay. losses last week, man. You know, that's a tough one for sure. Uh, looking at the Patriots offense, it was firing, you know. I've never seen so many fumbles, though, in a Bill Belichick era, honestly. That was really tough to see. I think the Patriots are lacking a lot of discipline, you know. I'm big uh, on Mac Jones. I am big on Mac Jones. Mac Jones! Mac Jones! Mac Jones. If you haven't heard this yet, Mac Jones uh, made history, best completion percentage by a quarterback in their debut. Not right. saying anything, not calling any Tom Brady, Elway, there's or, some Dave you know, vibes I don't know, there. you know, there's nothing to say. <laughs> but looking into this next week going against the Jets, who's going to be pretty solid against a team that is kind of crumbling. Um, uh, Belichick against the rookie quarterback. Absolutely. Belichick against the Jets, he has not forgotten about, what, like almost 30 years ago now? Just a rookie quarterback yeah, in general, though. Yeah, oh, they're solid. Well, and the last time they met, they almost lost the during the uh, 2020 season. And I'm sure that uh, he wants to make sure and set the tone that we're not going to be losing to the Jets anytime soon. Uh, moving forward, I think uh, Hunter Henry is going to be someone that you can't really look forward to starting in your leagues. You know, he was really big at the Chargers, but in this past scheme with five or six different options, you know, and Bill mixing it up, Johnny Smith is definitely going to probably see more targets than Hunter Henry for sure. So uh, 
Well, I think the Patriots' uh, offensive schemes, you've never really su- seen a favorite target besides Randy Moss or Rob Gronkowski. Yep. And, and obviously you're talking legendary talents there, so unless you are deserving of that number one spot. It worked well with Hernandez and Gronk, but yeah. I mean, they're not on that level, obviously. That was such a killer combination. No. You are Fuck not you. a Ooh, wizard, God. Henry. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Dude, oh. the sh- yeah, shit's yeah. broke. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a wizard, Henry. Y'all muggle. Uh... $10 million a year muggle that was signed as a second tight end, and people talk shit on the Raiders for picking a running back up a $6 million. Yeah. Speaking of, that's a guy you got to look at this week. It's Kenny and Drake, all right? Ooh. But uh, moving on, last two games we have here, before I get into your starts and your cautions, we have the Sunday night matchup, and let's talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. New places, same old faces. Same old bomb-ass production. Matt Stafford is that dude in Los Angeles. All right, let's talk about it, boys. I don't think there's a guy who's been shit on more in his career. Well, I'm a little biased. I can talk about a certain family car later. (laughs) But uh, Matt Stafford, I mean, honestly, though, has been shit on more than any quarterback in our generation. First off, it was, oh, Calvin Johnson's the entire, you know, talent pool of that wide receiver group. And, yeah, sure, you get some decent guys like Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay in there in the last couple of years. But still, with injuries, with the lack of offense and the lack of defense backing him up, Matt Stafford has been a man on an island. So, and once again, I think Sean McVay, with a young quarterback, with a young quarterback, they said it on Sunday night. They said Sean McVay needed a partner, not a student. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what you get. You get Matt Stafford, who's only a couple years younger than him. So you get someone who not only can sit here and comprehend what you're trying to do, but also make adjustments, make you a better coach because he has a different kind of mindset coming in. And when you bring that together, it's going to make magic. It's given everything. Cooper Cup, Robert Woods. Don't Stafford forget. deserved this. Yes. Deshaun Jackson's Stafford also yes. a Ram. This is like when you see a woman like get out of a really bad relationship. You're like, good for you, boo boo. I just he want you to. Like you deserve it. Yeah, no. go and have it. Stuck, stuck with Detroit. Stuck with Stuck Detroit. with him. Stuck and with him. If you see him in the Ford, you don't want to see him in the Ford. Exactly. Yeah. He's, you know that yeah. the Detroit was in a ball game if he had the ball in the Ford. Matt Stafford carried the Detroit Lions to not be the Browns for his entire career. You know, the no. facts. The facts. Because he, Literally. He, he gave them a solid court, a franchise quarterback to build around. Let's remember, he was drafted after uh, the 0-16 Lions it's just in picked Buc- him up. Buccaneers just signed Sherman. No! The Niners Buccaneers were talking Ladies and Sherman. gentlemen, on the show, oh. Richard Sherman is title chasing out in this bitch. Wow. That's okay, though, because oh. the Niners signed Josh Norman. Really? That's fine. He actually starts to yep. Josh yep. Norman yep. starts The Niners did sign uh, Josh Norman. Yep. That'll be fine until we play Tennessee. Shout out Derrick Henry for that stiff arm. Hey. All righty. Well... Different. Richard Sherman, we'll talk about that one in a bit. We'll talk about that one with the picks when we talk about the Buccaneers. But uh, other than that, for the Rams game, I think Matty Stafford is that dude. So, Matt Stafford, if you can acquire him, do it. Because he's that guy. Moving on (laughs) next. The Ravens and the Raiders. Something very close and near and dear to my heart. <laughs> Ravens, I think it's become pretty clear with the running back injuries and with all the you know frantic signings. Obviously, we saw Tyshawn Williams feature very heavily in the first half, but the second half was a heavy dose of Latavius Murray. You hardly saw Williams go out there. I picked up Tyshawn, obviously. He starts out the game well. It didn't uh, end it too well. The running game is going to be a committee. I think at this point, with you having those injuries, unless you trade for a running back one, guess who your RB1 is? Lamar. Duh. It should be this entire time. That's how that offense is going to go. You're going to see more of the same from Lamar, and I think you're actually going to see more rushing production from him. I think you're going to see that offense do a lot better than what they did Monday night because I think you're going to see a Raiders defense that's going to do a lot better than last year and a lot better than they did. Dude, Max Crosby had the best PFF rank for a pass rusher in week one. And that was with Chandler Jones having five sacks. So Max Crosby is that dude. Yannick Ngakwe, the hamstring injury, is not looking as bad as it seems. He has not been ruled either in or out for today yet. So that's good news for us. But, I mean, like, I think Max Crosby had a 47% win rate, and you had Yannick with a 44% win rate. The only person who beat that was your boy Nick Bosa with a 59.6% win rate last week. So we got some boys who are ready to fucking eat this year. But let's talk on offense. Who's ready to eat as well? Someone who went undrafted. In every damn fantasy league that I was a part of, I'm talking about Derek Carr. Seriously, stop disrespecting this man. You know what? I'm taking this shit off here. Stop it. Seriously, be done with this shit. This is the number one quarterback in the NFL. Maybe not on your fantasy team. No, maybe he's not starting over Kyler Murray or Josh Allen or anything else of that aspect. But the man is a fucking great quarterback. 
435 yards, three tutters, overtime win against the Ravens. If there's anyone, on Monday night. If there's anyone in Las Vegas' offense worth trusting, I'm going to say it's Derek It's Hart. Derek. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust or, or Jacobs. I wouldn't trust Drake. I wouldn't trust Edwards. I wouldn't trust Ruggs. I would trust Darren Waller and Derek Carr. And Derek Carr. That's it. Jacobs is healthy. He's that dude, but once again, you said the first part of that sentence. Availability is the best yeah. ability. Yep. All right, so since I threw up the beard. Woo. Everybody come up here. We're going to do this in rotating. We have the article up here. So everybody, let's go to this in rotating fashion. Jace has got his starts. So fantasy starters for the week, and then he's got his cautions coming up later. So, gentlemen. Alex just said Carr's ass. What the fuck up? Yeah, Alex is a <laughs> hater, all right? Yeah, Broncos yeah. fans. We know Alex. Sorry, I just did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right, so we'll get up on there. Talk about the Broncos fans then. Do it up for Oh, Alex fuck all right, Broncos because fans. Because the first quarterback is? Teddy Bridge. Wow. Listen, that was a great signing. I don't know why so many fans were upset about it in the offseason. Uh, Drew Locke is fucking cheeks. So let's just cover that. Uh, Bridgewater, you, you at least know he's going to win you some football games. He's not going to turn the ball over. Um, he's a consistent QB. He's, he's, never really, he's never really had a true chance, I would say, really besides Carolina to actually kind of take over again. Um, even Carolina, that Matt Rule was his first year last year, but he still had some good games with DJ Moore. Um, if he would have stayed there, I think that offense would have been very lethal. Anyways... Buccane- or Buccaneers, not Buccaneers. Broncos, I think, handled the Jacks today. I feel like it could be a, it could be a trap game. I don't know why I'm saying it's a trap game for the Broncos because they're not going anywhere, but it might be a trap game. Six points. I'm, I'm thinking about the Jags spread today. Um, and just don't forget that Patty's the GOAT, and he will be your dad for fucking ever. Chances so. you a bandwagon fan. Oh, chances of hoe. <laughs> no you, Chance. Next up, Tyler, get up on up there. Next quarterback. You sent me up here to talk about this guy. Next quarterback up is Jared Goff. Ooh. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Detroit now, right? What we got written here is Jared Goff surprised the fantasy community last week when he hosted a stout 49ers defense and after a significant injury to Verrett, ended up carving it up to the tune of 338 yards that translated to 34 fantasy points and a QB3 finish. Uh, I don't want to base anything off of that performance personally but Jared Goff did show that he can come up and he could play game long under this new offense where the 49ers defense didn't play all game long um I kind of like Jared Goff in Detroit uh but right now I don't know where to look because they got rid of guys like Kenny Galladay and they have you have you have Jared Goff and you have DeAndre Swift um so I'm I'm thinking he he's set up for success there but the NFC North awful as they're the only winless division in the league right now but they're still the nfc north and there is some there is still some talent there so i'm expecting jared goff to do pretty well in this defense um being that it's not the rams defense or offense so he's uh got another chance to prove himself on prime time monday night against the packers who are will be playing without zadarius smith so um I'm going to trust Jared Goff this week. I like it. I think the Packers are going to fucking have a game, but I think the Lions, same thing, divisional game, it might be a... It, you, never, you never know. Motor so, City, Dan they showed, Campbell. They showed some fight against San Fran, and I thought that was a very impressive game. It was, it was. And uh, we, it, I'm going to make it personal here and say that <laughs> if uh, we learned anything from Detroit's first game, it's that they can get away with a whole lot of holding. So Jared Goff's protected. By both his offensive line and the referees. And the refs. And the refs. So I'm looking forward to see what he has for us week two on prime time. Oh, yeah. One point. One point. <laughs> Hi. Okay, we're getting started off with running backs. Ooh, Tyson Williams from Baltimore. That's that's definitely an interesting one. We'll see if the turf monster gets another ACL. Um, you know, it's really tough to see, and that's kind of why you're getting to see some of this depth in the league, you know. the, I mean, the Baltimore Ravens are struggling for running backs. They signed Latavius Murray, which wasn't too bad, but, you know. They, what, Devontae Freeman or whatever on the and Le'Veon <laughs> squad? Bell. And Le'Veon Bell, yeah, they've signed some veteran backs. Mm-hmm. Even though uh, Tyson Williams didn't get too much uh, of the timeshare, he was in the backfield for 43% of the rushing attempts. Uh, just a little bit under Latavius Murray's, 
But, uh, you know, he did have 60% of the receiving work, which is going to be pretty big if you're looking for a sleeper in a PPR league. Uh, the Ravens faced the Chiefs this week, which, uh, you know, gave up the most running back, uh, gave up more yards to the running back position than any other team. But uh, I think... played the Browns. <laughs> you know, coming with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, you know, that's really tough, and the Browns were pretty dirty. But I do think that uh, the Chiefs are kind of going to hold it down this week. But if you're looking for a running back, you know, needed someone who uh, might need to take a shot like me, I got David Johnson starting one of my leagues. So, you know, I... Uh, it's tough when you lose uh, Raheem Mosher. You know, that's really tough. You know, it's really bad. So, uh, you know, I think I'm going to be adding Tyson Williams myself. Worth it. All right, flex on him, Sig. For the, the, the one and only. The one and only. Our one and The reason why you guys are here. Yeah. We're here no to talk about Miles Sanders. Yeah. Non research and This is what our fantasy wizard Jason said. Last week, Sanders, my caution column, as the Falcons were pretty good against RBs last year. However, Sam, Sam, uh, Sanders surprised me and balled out despite forfeiting 40% of the backfield to rookie Ken, Kenneth Gainwell. Sanders still had 113 yards scrimmage and most from the RB receiving work. This week, he faces a banged up 49ers defense that just gave up 41.5 points combined to Swift and Williams. He should be a great start for this week. I actually think Miles Sanders, he was one of my players coming in this season. I believe that he was going to have a breakout season. He was a couple runs. He was kind of always dinged by a little bit of injuries, something to take him out for a couple weeks, you know. But I think he's fully healthy. Everyone in the camp said that he was looking really good. But you do now have this monster in Kenneth Gainwell, a running back they took out of Memphis. I believe it was the third or the fourth. It was the third or the fourth round, but he's looking to be good. He made some plays. He got a touchdown last week, and it's looking to be like he's going to be the RB2 there, so it looks like they're going to have more of a committee. But even in a committee and getting 113 yards from scrimmage, 60% of the receiving, he should definitely be a start, and that is from the Wizard. And in Siglin's timeline, that is uh, a.k.a. Brian Westbrook. So, Donovan. Yeah. Donovan. 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 Andy Reid said they're looking hot. You know a rough really, day yesterday. You know who I really like out of the backfield? Brian Mitchell, okay? He's a return yeah. specialist. He's a good, uh, he's a good you know, third Darren, down running back. We got Darren back. Sproles back there. You know, T.O. with a broken leg. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Siglin's Miss Catch, give me a fucking break. Let's talk about some wide receivers here, all right? We're talking about... Not two girls. We're talking about the one Cooper Cup. Oh, All right, no, 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 ladies no, no, no. and gentlemen. Shout so out my fantasy name. Two yep. Cup or C cups. Yep. Oh, hey, I was about to say mine. Hey, mine is go. two girls, one cup. All right, <laughs> two girls, one cup. Kids, if you don't know what I'm talking about, do not fucking Google it. Your parents' firmware will appreciate you. All right, but going up here, Cooper Cup's going to be a starter. All right, we talked about it with Maddie Staff. Here we go. Quarterback one, receiver one. Cooper Cup, and a lot changes year to year. And the Colts' defense was formidable against the pass last year. They only gave it the fifth most receiving yards. Or, no, they gave up the fifth most receiving yards on Sunday. As Russell Westbrook, well, he's in the kitchen. He was cooking. He's cooking it up. I like that. Consistency. James Harden just mm, stirring up the pot. Go Derek Carr. Fuck you, Alex Connor. Mm, shout it out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, but, yeah, the high-powered Rams offense, they're looking for a 2-0 start. I mean, immediate chemistry with Stafford turned out to 180 yards and a tutter. He's the wide receiver, 11. I think he's going to perform uh, top 15 every single week from here on out. He's going to be that dude. I think you'll see a bit of the Jefferson-Thielen dynamic to work cups. He's going to be your resident white boy. He's going to get you, you know, your Woods solid catches. And Woods is still a safe play, but I think Woods has the potential to go off. He's a little bit more of the speed, but, man, Cup is... I yes, honestly you're don't. At the one guy's gonna get him to the red zone. The other guy's yeah. gonna. Yeah, exactly. We might yeah. have to talk route runners sometimes because Cooper Cup's in my top five he's for for game. route runners in the NFL. I'd say like a DeAndre Cooper. I think he's, he's the a, most underrated NFL, yeah, NFL wide receiver. Yeah, I think so. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Um, well, it comes to being a white wide receiver. I mean, Hunter Renfro, Cooper oh, Cup. You know, <laughs> Adam Thielen for a he's long a time. Machine. Hunter Renfro does not look like he should play in the NFL. He looks like he should be selling me insurance. You know, All right. Renfro. Yep, third Renfro. But uh, as far as another guy who's going to be a solid start this week, we've already brought him up. Let's talk about Jamar Chase. Because Jamar Chase, yeah, the drops were concerning. He dropped a lot of passes in practice. He dropped three on a primetime preseason game. But week one, he came out to ball. And I think you saw this in college. Jamar Chase performed the best against the best teams. 
And that's the sign of a number one player right there. And I think you saw it out of Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow having his boy back. But you also got to talk about, I mean, that offense is low-key lethal. I think T. Higgins, talking about how he's going to go back to number five because he's not Chad Johnson 2.0, he's T. Higgins 1.0. I mean, that they have weapons. Is, Joe Mixon is an RB1. Fantasy-wise, this is an offense that you might start to trust as the year goes on. They're um, lethal. I know, I know Jace has a lot of hope for him. I have a lot of hope for him, too. So start Jamar Chase this week, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody on that team. Probably. Speaking of uh, cooking it up in the kitchen, why don't we go ahead and uh, who's going to take the tight ends for our segment? Let's kick it to Mr. Wayne Brings Plenty. Tight ends. Hey, 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 Travis Kelsey, all right? Travis Kelsey. Hey, be lucky I didn't you know, take the Darren Waller. You and them tight ends. Um, wide receiver like you, Mitch. <laughs> Speaking of tight ends, I like the first name on this list, actually. Although he's on the Chargers, but... We have one, Jared Cook. Now I know Mr. Sigmund Wheeler is very fucking familiar with that name because I told him to draft him towards the end of a fantasy draft. That being said, I actually think Cook is a very safe, safe target for Herbert. He's a safety net. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, that's, that's what a tight end is, um, especially if you get someone like Cook, who's a solid vet as well. It's just a perfect match made in heaven. A younger QB, solid veteran at tight end, a safe, safety pocket. Um, good, good. Chemistry Good right there. For yeah, Henry. most yeah. definitely. Cook was a surprising player on Sunday as he had 17% of the team's total receiving yards and ended up with eight targets and five receptions and 56 yards. Not crazy, but not terrible by any means. Um, it looks like he finished. It was good enough to finish as the wide receiver 15 on the on this week. They traveled to Dallas to take on the Cowboys this week. Um, we're going to talk about that game as we do our takes here a little bit later on, but I think that should be a very fun game to watch today. Um, and then Noah Fant. Also another name that I've kind of been keeping out for as well. I think he was finally due for his year this year, um, especially with a quarterback like Bridgewater. And honestly, they had some solid wideouts. Judy, before he went down, but that should be a solid four to six weeks. When he gets back, I hate to say it, but I think he's going to be a stud. Um, Cortland Sutton and then KJ Hamler as well. Um, Fant came out of the gates and impressed Sunday, finishing his tight end 10 on the week, actually against the Giants team that allowed the fourth fewest points to tight ends last season. Like I said, too, that Giants defense is very underrated. Um, he gets the privilege of facing a Jaguars team that allowed the Texans tight end, Farrell Brown, never heard of him, uh, to have a top 15 performance. So obviously that says a lot. With 23% of the team's workload last week and Judy's 20% workload uh, being re redistributed, Fant has all the sta stars lining up to have a big game this week. So obviously if you do DraftKings or FanDuel, that's probably going to be a solid steal for you there. Next up, we'll call up Stiggy for the, uh, the quarterback play here, huh? Okay. We're gonna be talking about Tua. I two actually and Tua. two and O Tua is what I call them. Everyone didn't know what I was saying, but I love watching Tua. I'm rooting for him to have a comeback year. He did well last year, considering a tough matchup against the Pats, leading the Dolphins to a victory while netting fantasy owners owners almost 20 points. This week, I'm being very cautious in starting him as he faces the Bills defense. That kept the Steelers' offense in check and held Big Ben in QB 28 finish on the week. Tua's schedule opens up a little easier after this week, but I'd avoid him this Sunday if you have him. Now, actually where I'm at, I think Tua has all of the weapons and the stuff there to make this defense look foolish. I think Big Ben, they have a running game. I think Gaskins is going to blow out. I would actually start Tua this week. I think he's going to get you 20 points. I think Jalen Waddle is going to score. I'm going against the fantasy wizard. So oh. I have my own with this. That's a bold oh, move. Right. That's a bold strategy, Kyle. He says, fuck you, I think The man who does all the research. I is know. The man, man that does not at all. Oh. I actually did a lot of research oh about this. And you guys the brain God. versus the gun. And you the guys will be seeing. You guys will be seeing about my Sigmund second year quarterback. Sigmund giving me fantasy advice after I had to tell him his starting running back was out this week. Oh, my oh, God. Chad, shout it out. I love it. I agree. Uh, I Jacobs, I Jacobs went out. Guys, that was like, different. The Bills defense is <coughs> the Bills defense is good, They're but Tua has defense. a good line. That's the Bills. Tre'Davious White. I'm gonna see what happens. I think the safety blanket in Gasecki is gonna break out. Devonte Parker. Gusecki's due for a game this Devontae week. Parker is on a career year, so he needs to kind of produce to either boost his value or to make more money from the team that he's currently on. Jalen Waddle wants to blow up and be a great successor they that he was there. They took him over Chase, right? Yeah. So no. 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 They yeah. took him over Smith. They that's, took him over that's Smith. That's what it was. They took him over Smith. Sorry, that's what it was. 
But <laughs> with that being said, I think that they could. And with them having a running game, because like it looked like the Steelers' game. running game wasn't there last week, and I think Gaskins is going to be a breakout running back this year. Yeah. And that is from the Wizard. No, you're not the Wizard, Harry. Oh, shit. Yeah, all right. Yeah, goddamn. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, because Siglin taught caution, and he's going to start to a... Talk Carson Wentz and why you're going to have some caution tape across that boy this week. Boom. Not only is he going to throw a couple interceptions, get me closer to slapping my hand across Siglin's face, but cannot wait. Despite dealing with a you know lingering injury, Carson actually had a pretty solid week last week. Two fifty-two, two tutters. It's a pretty good game most weeks. I think we would all take that out of our quarterback one, no complaints. But twenty-two points, not a bad week. He's going against the Rams this week. Okay. What else Jaylen do I say? It's Jalen Ramsey. It's Aaron Donald. Another top five defense. Yeah, it's, a, it's the Rams. It's the Rams. Um, it's the Rams. Now, I could be wrong. I do. I, I want to like Carson Wentz. Uh, opposite the slap bet, I do want to like Carson Wentz. He's from North Dakota. He's a Dakota boy. I think we all got mad love and appreciation and respect for Carson Wentz. It's dirty with how life did him with the ACL injury. Um, I think after that, Doug Peterson was not the dude to coach him. I do like his prospects in Indianapolis, actually. I, I talk a lot of shit. I like Carson Wentz. Not this week, though. We're going to caution him. Moving on to the running backs. Someone else we talked about in week one, we're going to bring back up here, James Robinson, a guy who was drafted very highly because, well, he was Jacksonville last year. He carried the entire team. I mean, they wouldn't play Gardner Minshew the entire year uh, with injuries and then trying to start some other quarterbacks. I think you get Trevor Lawrence in there. Obviously, you push Gardner out. You have the quarterback production now. You actually have a good receiving core around you in Marvin Jones, LaVisca Chenault, and DJ Chark. So, Robinson's going down. Now, I think the plan was already to go more committee-based with drafting Etain anyways. Obviously, with the injury, they kind of had to divert routes there. But still, James Robinson, he's not going to get the production. He's not going to get the play. Caution on starting him here this week, even though... You probably invested a really high draft pick into him. So sorry about that, boys. Number two, Mike Davis. Uh, I think Mike Davis filled in very well last year for Carolina. And we did not see that again uh, last week out of Atlanta. Atlanta kind of dropping the egg. Mike Davis is going to be a caution start. Shouldn't have been too high of a pickup for anybody, but I know a lot of guys started reaching on him. And I know your fantasy wizard himself, Mr. Jason, was very high on Mike Davis and now is now turning and changing narrative. Only in week two. So, wow. yeah. Yeah, what does that say about commitment? Happy five-year anniversary, Jason Scott. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All righty, and because of the caution, who is the first on this list? Tyler, get your ass on up here. <laughs> caution on Debo Samuel. Samuel put up a weak winning performance on Sunday after he finished the wide receiver three with 189 yards and a touchdown. As exciting as this performance was, I'd still advise you to take caution playing in this week against a Philly defense that shut the Falcons completely down and held Calvin Ridley to 7.6 point game. Uh, I love Debo, but remember he played the Lions, so just temper your expectations. Um, as far as the week one comparison goes with uh, the Falcons and the Eagles, um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go coaching head to head here and trust Mike Shanahan a little bit more, but uh, Debo is still gonna have some caution on him this week as the Philly defense did look did look good, and we still don't quite know what to expect from the San Francisco San Francisco offense and who specifically to trust there. Um, uh, Debo was obviously drafted as a wide receiver one on that team, and he is the wide receiver one on that team. But uh, like we talked about earlier, you're still gonna have issues trusting who to start each week in that offense because it's always going to be something different. So you're going to start Debo because you drafted him like a starter, but temper your expectations on him a little bit this week. Following that, we have uh, DJ Moore from Carolina. Moore had a satisfactory week as most people's flex play, putting up 12.4 points on 80 yards and six receptions. It was optimistic to see him getting 47% of the receiving work on the team, but this week he's fa facing an extremely challenging matchup in the Saints defense that handed Rodgers a pitiful performance and held Devontae Adams to 8.1 points. It was a fluke. So if you've been flexing more and have other options, I'd consider looking that way. I'm going to agree here because the Saints defense did look stout. Um, they switched up their whole game plan to prepare for Aaron Rodgers and shut down Devontae Adams, and I'd expect them to do the same thing against Carolina. So um, definitely start DJ Moore with some caution this week or look, look for other options. Alrighty, and then we got the tight ends up. We are going to move Mr. Siglin Wheeler on in. 
It looks like we are here talking about David Njoku. David Njoku joined, uh, showed off his athleticism and led the team in tight end production with three receptions for 76 yards and finished as the tight end 11. His performance has people glancing at the way of the waiver wire and they have a nice matchup against the Texans. However, I feel that this may have been an outlier more than a signal as he only had 25% of the team's tight end work last season. Hooper is still the sixth highest paid tight end in the league and the, for a reason I expect him to bounce back leading the team in tight end work this week. If you want to roll the dice on Njoku, there's a chance it could pay off, but understand there's going to be some risk with it. So here you have a little bit of a gamble. They have two solid starting tight ends, and you don't ever know what's going to happen. With that being said, you have someone who is going to get less catches but probably get more yards. So if you're playing in a non-PPR league, that might benefit you more than the guy who gets seven catches and gets less yards. So as the wizard says, be cautious, as am I. I'm cautious on Njoku this week, and I am actually starting Hooper over Njoku in one of my leagues because I have them both for some reason. Next tight end, did you have another one? That's it. Alrighty. I'll get you back on the screen here in a second. Siggy. All right. I got another chair coming because, ladies and gentlemen, something the esteemed Mr. Wheeler has been planning for a second now as I get these microphones set up. Oh, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Fuck Lane. Just kidding. Love you. No, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it then. All right. So for financial advice, we are going to be talking to Mr. LVP. But first, let's talk about a little Wizards dueling here. I love this one so much. Jace wanted to get one with a football on it. I like the sound effects on this one. There we go. Let's talk about it again. Let's talk about some money matchups to win your fan duel this week. First off, for the man who is a Patriots fan, Mr. Mac Jones, we're going to shout him out here. He's $6,800 on FanDuel today. Going up against the Jets, that's really cheap considering your top quarterbacks Easy are money. expensive. So save a little bit of money. Go ahead and invest heavy into RB wide receiver this week. Pick up your quarterback as Mac Jones for $6,800. Number two, your running back value pick of the week is going to be Javante Williams against Jacksonville. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Jacksonville. Javante's the backup to Melvin Gordon. Of course, Melvin had a big run last week, but I think Javante looks solid. Besides Melvin getting that big run, I honestly thought Javante was the better performing back for Denver last week. So you can pick him up for $5,500, which is kind of like standard backup running back money. But if he performs like a starter, you're going to get your money's worth. Pick up Javante Williams. Go heavy in your other positions if need be. Wide receiver money pickup this week. Let's talk about a man who is making his way in the Chargers offense. Mike Williams against Dallas, 5600 bucks. Gentlemen, that's cheap. That is cheap, cheap, cheap for a wide receiver too. It's wide receiver three or bench wide receiver money right there. So go ahead and spread the wealth. If you're picking up someone expensive, um, I don't. Devontae's playing Monday night, so obviously you're more expensive. Like DeAndre Hopkins, uh, shit, who would be some other ones? I think Cooper's probably going to be expensive. Uh, Diggs is going to be another expensive receiver. Save your money. Grab Mike Williams and juice up elsewhere in the lineup. And then finally, a guy we talked about starting this week in fantasy, pick him up in your FanDuel. It is fantasy. Noah Fant, $5,700 on FanDuel. We're talking uh, a little bit of value pickups there. And then, shouting out my good buddy, Mr. Job Newenhouse. Newenheis, however you say it, it's really long Danish and hard. It, it sucks, okay? All right. But to start off the parlays for the day, Mr. Job ended up picking a four-gamer. He did these individually, but he also parlayed them together. So my good buddy says, pick the Rams minus three and a half. Pick the Saints minus three and a half against the Panthers. Get the Bengals with the one and a half point spread against the Bears, and then take the Chiefs with three and a half points against the Ravens. And with yeah, that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce our resident chief financial analyst, Mr. Lane Brinksplin. And hello, and I am back. Um, actually just punched in a salty little parlay play on a one player. Um, I'm going to start out with a six-point teaser, though. This is going to be a, a five-game parlay. We're going to take the Panthers plus 10 against the Saints at home. Not really liking them at plus three. I think they can at least cover a touchdown, though. Uh, Dolphins plus 10 at home against the Bills. Bills know that they cannot start 0-2, especially, I mean, if they're going to look to make a deep run. Obviously, 
We all saw the image of Stefan Diggs at the end of the Chiefs game in the playoffs last year. Uh, we know that team's hungry. So they're going to come out hot, and I think they're coming on fire. But the Dolphins have a very respectable defense and offense. So it should be a fun game to watch, but just going to take it easy and stick with the Dolphins plus 10. Um, also going to call the Phillies plus 9.5 against the Niners at home. Uh, City of Brotherly Love. This is their first game at home. They, they took care of Atlanta week one at home uh, on the road, obviously. So I think the city's going to be rocking, especially with Hurts finally back home. It's going to be a fun game to watch. Cowboys plus nine and a half. And then we're also going to take the over in that game at 48 and a half. Uh, Chargers have a salty defense, but so do the Buccaneers and the, the Cowboys put up work against them. So I think this game is going to be a shootout, to be quite honest. I think this could even hit the 60s. Um, and then for my upset of the day, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be taking Philly. Straight money line over San Fran. Like I just mentioned, first game back at home with Jalen Hurts, a full healthy team. City's going to be rocking. Um, I think they could possibly do it against San Fran. Detroit almost did it, so it gives me hope. Um, for the parlay, I just punched in. And now Cleveland just had a very upsetting loss at home against my team or on the road against my team. Um, same thing. They know in their, their division is very tough with the Steelers, um, Bengals, and then obviously the Ravens as well. So I think Baker's going to have to come out hot. They don't have Chubb this week. Hunt's going to get quite a bit of the workload, especially, uh, I think, in the passing game as well. I think Baker can easily throw 310-plus passing yards, 27-plus completions, three passing touchdowns, and then Cleveland to win. Lock that in for plus 1250. Um, I think that's actually lock of the day for the parlay. So, And then for the night game, obviously, I'm going to take my boys. Minus three and a half. I think the over can also hit that game as well. Our defense isn't quite stout. We're known to, get, we're known to give up points. Um, and with them not having Peters, I love Marcus Peters. He was drafted by the Chiefs, obviously. Um, that's a big hit on their defense as well. So expect that one to be a shootout with Lamar and Patty. Two former MVPs. It's going to be a fun game to watch tonight. So this is not financial advice. Okay? All righty. Sigling, get up and introduce the segment, my dude. And I will murder your bookie. Fucking <laughs> end him. I will murder your bookie. Yeah, now I'm going to go another Panther. I know. Ugh. Got like I six know, entries. Right? All righty, this is Sig's Corner. In the Sig's Corner today, we're going to be talking about second-year quarterbacks. Will any of these players face a sophomore slump, or can they beat the odds of that stigma? Here, we're going to go through all four of the big names. As you should all know, they are 1-0 from the first season. Let's do this! <clears throat> Starting with Joe Burrow, his week one stats, he went 20 for 27, 261 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He was sacked five times. And he has 128.8 rating. So going on with Joe Burrow, they have the sixth toughest schedule in the NFL. So he has the hardest schedule of any of these rookie quarterbacks. And he's playing in the second strongest division, in my opinion. He has the 25th best line ready to go. So that's not a very good line. Not a lot of protection there. But he has the 13th best receiving core. So there's going to be a lot of of opportunities as long as they can protect him and he can get the ball downfield. I think with all of this information, Joe has all of the tools to be successful. He has all of the weapons there in three great young receiver or three good re young receivers that are looking to be great, such as Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd. He also has a tight end who's kind of breaking out over the past two seasons in Uzma. But the where the double-edged sword is, he has all of these weapons, but no shield to protect him. Well, and I think that's that's the big thing you're kind of finding with Joe Burrow right now is Joe is the biggest risk versus reward because the high ball off the high ball point of Joe Burrow is he's a top ten quarterback. Oh, easy. I mean, with the weapons, with the offense they have around him, with the ability to hand off to Joe Mixon in that running game, you have the talent around you to be a top ten offense and to be the best guy in this class. And I think talent wise, he is. The problem is, is once again, as you talked about, I think offensive line and strength of schedule. In the NFL, there's a couple of consistencies, and usually the top teams in the league are the ones who are hitting the quarterback the most. So it's going to be hard to throw the ball when you're on your back all the time, and it's hard to run the ball and balance the offense when you're you know, playing from behind quite often. And I still think 
The defense, the pass rush was amazing last week against the Vikings, but that's a weak Vikings line. Let's see what they do in week two. Well, it's also you got to think about the defenses that he's going to see twice a year. Ravens, he has the Ravens Steelers. defense, the Steelers defense, and the Browns defense. All stat lines. You know who I keep stat forgetting lines. about that is in Cleveland now? Jadavion Clowney. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Clowney was there last week. He blew up a run play, and I'm like, I forgot that he was there opposite of Miles Garrett. Yeah. That's scary. It's And he's not like an every down player either. Yeah. He's going to be like first and thirds. Yeah. So, so out of the four, I'd say best talent, but I'd say uh, hardest path ahead of him. I'm going to give him number two for my second-year quarterbacks. I think he's going to do the second best. I mean, if we're combining record, stats, overall performance, I think I'm going to give him the second best year two quarterback. I actually had him at third. Really? Okay, okay. I had him at third best just because, like we said, the strength of the schedule – the line needs to get better at protecting Joe. They have a couple of young guys out there. That I believe they draft. They got the they got a lineman from LSU, and then they also have a lineman from. They drafted. Not Te- was it Tevin Jenkins? Was it? Who? No, Tevin Jenkins went to the Bears. They. I remember they got a sec. They got a receiver uh, lineman in the second round, but they just need to do better at protecting Joe, and also with the addition of paying Riley Reef, Reef all that money. It needs to come to fruition, and there needs something that's got to be better. And that line needs to get better if they want the Bengals to play at their best potential. Well, and that's the thing is I believe in Zach Taylor in this offense, but they need to give him the tools around the skill in this offense in order for it to function. I mean, everybody knows a bad offensive line is the number one Catalyst. kryptonite that will be that will take a team down. So, Yeah, that's where I have that going. So with this being said, I think with the schedule and the fact of the line, they just need to get better at protect, protecting Joe. Gotcha. So you have him at number th- three, I have him at number two. Let's talk about the next guy. So we got Tua. We're going week one stats. He was 16 for 27, 202 yards, one touchdown, one interception. He was sacked twice. He had four rushes for a yard and a touchdown. He had zero fumbles or zero lost fumbles, but he had a 79.6 rating. So as the same thing, they have the 27th toughest schedule in the NFL. They have the 29th best line. And they have, which in, which was rated the tenth best receiving court. Yeah. And that also comes into play with Will Fuller, but we know he isn't active until week four, potentially yep. week six. Who knows what's going on with him? But you have Will Fuller, Devonte Parker. You have uh, who was their third receiver last year? They're starting to blow up. So Will Fuller, Devonte Parker, Jalen Waddle. Obviously Waddle, but two. I was thinking um, they had a receiver last what's year. What's his name? He's got a super uh, – Albert Wilson? The, no, he's no. older. But I can't think Albert of who. Wilson is. He's, he's good. And then you've got a safety blanket. I'm trying to think of like – got a safety players. blanket in the breakout top ten tight end, who I believe is Mike Gusecki. Yes. I think Mike Gusecki is Mike very underrated for a tight end in the NFL. That's suburban dad Mike Gusecki. So I believe that Tua is actually going to have some of the bet some of the best numbers compared to the other three quarterbacks, but or that he'll have the best record, but not the best number because I believe yeah. his team output, the defense, the coaching that Brian Flores and everything has put out there, I believe that he will have probably the best record of the four quarterbacks, but not the stats that a Herbert or a Burrow is going to put up. Yeah. Um, Tua, I'm not going to lie. I'll start off and say he's my fourth rookie quarterback. I like Tua, but I think his ceiling is the shortest out of every quarterback. I think he he gives me game manager vibes, and obviously he can progress through his career. But right now, when I look at the dynamic ability of the other three members of this list, when I look at Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts, and uh, Justin Herbert, I just don't see that out of Tua. I don't see that dynamic, game-changing, like, let me take this that offense and put them on my back. killer that he had yeah. that freshman year for when he did it. Exactly, because yeah, he needs and, that back. and even then, you're still talking about him playing at Bama. You're talking about the team around Tua. So can he lead this team to more success? Yes. but And I am factoring that into my decision, and I'm still saying he's the fourth-best quarterback for me on this list. Once again, I don't think it's so much of a knock on Tua as it is really the skill of the other three guys. One thing I was pretty impressed by, though, I will say that they've already won one of their six division games, which is a nice way to start this. And with having a 29th ranked offensive line going into the seasons and only giving up two sacks to the revamped Patriots defense, that's pretty impressive. It is, but like I said, I'm going to need to see a lot more from Tua before I put him any higher up on this oh, list. I was more like, I was, yeah. That was more for yeah. the line being able to protect him. Yep. 
I think, so the, I think the line's going to be a little bit better than 29th. I think you see the Dolphins actually get into the playoffs this year. Like I said, um, I think he'll have the be- – I'm with you. He's out. Yeah. He's my fourth. I think he'll have the best record overall because of the team and the environment that he's in. I just don't think that he'll have the best numbers. Fair enough. Moving on here to the Herb Street. Yep, we're on Herbo, Justin Herbert. His week one stats, he went 31 for 47. He was throwing that thing a lot. He had 337 yards with one touchdown and interception, was sacked twice. He had four rushes for negative one yards. He had one fumble, one lost fumble with an 85.2 rating. I'm going to start this one off. Uh, He's my number one. Uh, Shout out Zach Thompson as well, our boy from uh, Liberty. Huge Chargers fan, uh, good friend of the show and friend of ours. So, shout out Zachy here. Uh, He's a big Herbo fan, obviously. Being a Chargers fan, he is my quarterback in this class. I like Burrow. I think if Burrow was in a better situation, um, I would like Burrow a little bit more than Herbert. Herbert gives me this, I don't want to say discount Patrick Mahomes, but I will because that's still a really good quarterback at the end of the day. Like He gives me this like one step below Patty Mahomes because he can sling it. Uh, he looks like he should be playing football in an alley instead of on an actual stadium because, I mean, the the angles of throws that he can make, the natural arm talent you put with the athleticism, and then the situation around him. I think Eckler's a hell of a back. Um, I do like Los Angeles. I'm not going to keep saying San Diego. I do that I do that it's on so purpose. Hard I do, no, I do it on purpose. Oh, I, will, I will call him San Diego. But Los Angeles, Team B, um, I think their quarterback's good. I like Keenan Allen. I like Mike Williams to blow up this year. Jared Cook, former Raider, he is a great guy to just step Solid in bet. and fill in that tight end and be a top 10 tight end every year. Uh, he's, he's a great fantasy sleeper. Yeah, he's a huge receiving tight end. Big so. body, solid hands. Exactly. So I like Herbo as my number one quarterback out of the year twos. So Herbo is my number one quarterback, but this is where everything goes. So they have the 17th toughest schedule, so they're right in the middle of the pack. They have the 18th best line, so again, right in the middle, the second best line of all the rookie quarterbacks out there. Mm -hmm. He has the 16th best receiving core, which is ranked the third best receiving core. So I actually believe Herbert will have the best stats of the four quarterbacks, but he might not have the best record due to playing in the toughest division in NFL football, and that's what I call the AFC. Yeah, Um, honestly, between both Wests, it's really hard because I think at that point you almost have to look and see which team has the worst teams. And I, But actually where I think the, the divider goes is I think the best team between the two divisions is the Chiefs. And I think that's where we make it because when you look at the bottom of the NFC West, I think the Cardinals have made their stake that they're going to be right in the thick they're, of it. I think the, the, Niners, take second in that. the Niners, the Seahawks, the Rams, dude, these, they're honestly with three playoff spots coming out of the they division. They could take all the wild cards again. It could happen in both. It could happen in both. It could happen. NFC West could, has done it before, too. Yep, it could happen to where, I know, but it's never happened in the seven in the seven-team playoff no, the seven, era from each could, conference. So I think, honestly, my wild prediction for this year is one of the West divisions will get three wild cards. Easy. I think so. an extra game to prove yep. it. Yep, yep. Because even with the straight, and honestly, if, the, if it's the AFC West, the Raiders, they have a hard schedule. We might be the ones out of that. Um, just looking at the way that Denver impressed me a lot more than I thought that they were going to come out mm-hmm. offensively last week. So, you know, there you go, Alex Connor. I'm talking a little bit of shit on the Raiders for you, buddy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I think it's going to be really hard in these divisions to get success. So, as I was saying, as also with the coaching change. Yep. He's got a new coach, new adjustments. They're changing up the offense. As you can see, it looks like they're not doing as much screening to Eckler as he got used to last season, which yeah. helped him bite off a good chunk of those yards. But they have the toughest division. I think he'll put up the stats. We don't have to worry about him getting you numbers. That's yeah. not going to be a problem. The issue is how many one-score games are they going to lose? That is um – Here's the thing, and if you're a Chargers fan, you know this, but I feel like if you're an AFC West fan, you know this as well. The Chargers actually have almost been probably the most unlucky team in the past decade. It goes back to the 2011 Chargers that were number one on offense, number one on defense, but number 32 in special teams when 8-8 eight eight missed the playoffs. Uh, it goes back to that. Since then, they've been injury woes, uh, losing games late, losing close games. The Chargers, honestly, I don't think have had The Chargers have been ruined talent. ever since the AFC Championship when the Patriots went and stomped on their halftime logo That's at true. the end of the game. That's the true. The Chargers have never been the same since then. They haven't. So we'll see what happens this year, but your last quarterback is someone I'm excited still, to talk about. I still got a little bit. Oh, you do? Herbo got But the one thing, though, with Herbo... Game's to watch in an hour. <laughs> the one thing, though, with Herbo is that the NFL, or that his team has really paid in protecting him. 
they my went, fingers still hurt? They went and picked up Lindsay. They went and drafted Rashawn Slater in the early rounds, in the early first round. So they've obviously want to protect this guy. They want him mm. to be there for a while. And then he has, in my opinion, it's ranked the 16th, but I think that he has the best offensive output to go out. They have Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler, Jared Cook, and then you have this rookie threat, Josh Palmer, who's coming out. And I, I wouldn't say best. I, th- I actually think that's accurately ranked. I think there's a lot of uncertainty. I think Mike Williams, uh, well, we like him and we believe in him. I think there's a lot of uncertainty walking into this year. JP is a rookie. I love him out of Tennessee. He's dynamite, but as long as he can consistently He's catch the ball. He's figure out the consistency. But they're not even they're not even the best offensive weaponry core in that division because you talk about the Chiefs with McCole Hardman, uh, Tyreek Hill, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Kelsey. I mean, even the Broncos, like Judy, Tim Patrick, Cortland Sutton, I mean, all the guys that they have I'm there, I'm pretty too. sure the Chiefs are ranked, like, seven or something like that. Yeah. Some of these rankings are a little off. They're but with that being said, I think he's going to put up numbers. I just don't know how the rest of the team will hold up. I think he'll have the best stats, not the best record. So that's where I have him ranked as number one, but could potentially be two or, or three. Yep. Because this is honestly who I think could be number one. It is Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts could be our best of the sophomore quarterbacks. He could be. And the, these are the reasons why. His week one stats, he went 25, 27 for 35, eight com- incomplete passes, 264 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions, was sacked one time, had seven rushes for 62 yards, zero touchdowns. He did fumble the ball, but he didn't lose it. They recovered. With that being said, he ends at the highest rating of 126.4, but these are the reasons why he's going to be successful. They have the 32nd toughest schedule in the NFL, or in layman terms, the easiest schedule in the NFL. They have the 13th best offensive line, the best offensive line out of all of these quarterbacks, but he has the 30th ranked best receiving core, and I think that all just comes with them being young uh, yep. and not playing games so you don't have the proper judgments. Well, I think there's two guys that you take into factor there that don't have NFL stats to their name. You have Devontae Smith, obviously, and then you have Kenneth Gainwell. Yeah, someone Jaylen who's Ra- going to start Jaylen making... Jalen Ragor. He only played four, four or five games last season. I know, but I mean, I'm just saying as far as rookies go, those are my rookies who are going to jump out. I think Ragor uh, polishes a little bit better in season two, but I think Devontae is their one. And then you still have Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz on that team. Like You, you still have two very good tight end ones. Safety so, blankets. Yeah. So, but this is a, so where do we start? Jalen Hurts had an amazing week, out of the best week out of the four. But it was against the Falcons. Let's not get all excited. They're looking to be the worst team in the NFL. Who knows what's going to happen. But I think Jalen Hurts is going to have the best season of the four QBs just because he plays in the weakest dis- division in the NFL football, the NFL East, NFC East, or as le- everyone likes to call it, the NFC East. NFC least. So. going to be relevant this year. It could be relevant, but I still think, I don't think any one of, anyone out of that division. knocked off the reigning champs at home. But they Giants and Washington had a hell of a game Thursday still night. That's what yeah. Washington's so, defense is. I think it's still Washington's division also. But with that being said, there it's the easiest division in NFL football. If you want to go look at stats, schedule, everything, you get to play a sorry team like the Giants twice, you know. I think the Giants. I don't know, man. I, um, I like Jalen Hurts. I'm going to put him as my three uh, just because – like I said, there's just more consistency coming from Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert, but he definitely has the highest ceiling because of the running aspect. Because Joe Burrow and Herbert can move, uh, they can scramble, but Jalen Hurts is a legitimate running threat. He is he is like Lamar, he's like Trey Lance, he's gonna like like Trey Lance will be or Justin Fields. Um, he isn't he's a legitimate running threat out of the backfield. I think you have to account for that. And at the end of the day, um, yeah, like I said, I'm going to put him as my three, but definitely potential to go number one. So. But and then the opposite of him and Burrow is he has the shield, but not quite the swords as so they were ranking. And I think yeah. with that being said is it's the fact that they've got young guys, they don't know how to announce them. But I actually believe that whoever made these predictions or put up this list at the beginning of the season is kind of wrong. I think the fact that they have the addition of Devontae Smith is going to be huge. I think Jalen Rager is going to bounce back because he's kind of going to need to if he wants to make a spot on that team. And then not only does he have one, but he has two safety blankets in Ertz and Goddard. And with the easiest schedule, I think Jalen is going to be able to do some big things, and we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Let's do it.
So with all this information and everything that I've learned, and I hope you've learned in six corners, I think that the four QBs in questions are going to surpass the dreaded sophomore slump, and all of them should elevate their level, their level of play as their careers continue to progress. There we go. Siglin's homework done. Saturday night. Thank you, Sig, for bringing us to your corner. Hand jobs are fifteen percent off. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sundays only. Sundays, Sundays only. only. Sundays only. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to put up a nice little graphic on the screen here that shows. Not Sig's corner. Will not be dropping Absolutely. Stuff It is our pick of results from last week. All righty. So, as the king and reigning champ, uh, I'll step up here with my 11 and 4 record. Yeah, it was a good week, boys. It was a good week. I went 11 and 4. Siggy Boy went 9 and 6. Lane and the absentee Sir Carr went 8 and 7. So, uh, if you'd grab that light, sir, because that turned off for some reason, we are going to get all the boys up here. We're going to clear some chairs and we're going to get our final predictions. In for you. Anyway. Sorry, how do I turn this on? Cool. Uh, there's a USB to go. Oh. Should I tell you on the show then? Actually, no, because if all the boys come here for the show, we're not going to have anybody tuning in on Thursday. <laughs> uh, no, 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 we'll just we'll stand for this one, boys. We'll stand for this one. This chair is really heavy for you to decide that. Getting your workout in, all right? <laughs> the arms in. Work on that running game, all right? Mm -hmm. Ouch. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Getting personal. Get the ball, bro. All right. I'm going to squeeze in the center here on you, Siglin. That way, Lane can you shake you. Yeah. All right. And this, we're going to go ahead and shout out Rays. Uh, we have Bryce Johnson on Beers and Bullshit. He's going to be a Rays independent ambassador. Oh, well, so, Rays, uh, they're doing something really cool. We're going to shout them out a little bit here. Uh, they sell uh, inner drinks like third party. So, essentially, you get a Rays distributor uh, that you know, like my friend Bryce Johnson, gets them at a great price discounted from online. I'm not going to give the price. You can talk to him about that one, but it is a hell of a discount versus what you can just get them ordered for online. So, um, yeah, we'll tag him in the video here, but shout out Bryce. Uh, I have loved almost every single flavor of these so far. We're car salesmen, Lane and I are. We run on great. caffeine. And so, yeah, the zero sugar, um, it's got this extended release caffeine. It really, I mean, they kind of kick. They don't really sit there and work for two hours. I slam one of these in the morning, and I'm good, like, you know, most of the day. So, the Baja yeah. Lime and the Starburst are fire. Yeah, yeah. Ray's has an amazing, um, you know, kind of board of flavors here. The great, the Baja Lime, which is like Baja Blast. They have a phenomenal platform. So go ahead and check them out at repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P sports.com. Or check out our good buddy Bryce Johnson. Contact him. And also congratulations, Bryce, on the birth of your brand new baby. So, congratulations, congratulations, welcome, sir. Yes, appreciate you yes, guys. and welcome the kiddo to the world. But did we give a shout out to our boy, Mr. Pyle? We did not yet. So, Mr. Mike Pyle. Pyle, Mr. Mike Pyle, with the uh, American Family yep. and Fam, uh, any insurance needs? We all know life's a bitch. It's inevitable. Shit's gonna happen. You're gonna tear an ACL. All right. ACL Terry. <laughs> uh, ACL Terry. ACL <laughs> Terry. <laughs> that being said, though, our boy Mike Pyle. <laughs> Big sponsor. He's actually our first sponsor. So please, if you do have any insurance needs, see Mr. Mike Pyle at American Family Insurance. Also a Chiefs fan. Also, shout out Leaves. Love you, my boys. There we go. Go Chiefs. We're going to see them. Sigal and I are going to the Chargers Chiefs game actually next week. We'll be live there. Ooh, there we in go. Kansas City. There we go. Uh, our sponsor, Mike's actually going to be there with Levi as well. So we're going to do some tailgating. Uh, obviously, we'll be tuning in on the Instagram. So. Yeah, check out, check out the Instagram. Stay They'll be tuned. commenting We're on the show be as in well. We're Arrowhead, baby. Go Chiefs. Go Chiefs. I'll do this. I'll do this you one. Saw, I'll do, I'll this, do one. this one. You saw it. Record that shit. Yeah, record yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It was on live. Record that shit. Yeah. Yep. My favorite picture. Dude, that's Chiefs. All right, my, my, Chiefs, my shame is gone. I brought my girl with Broncos jersey. Are you kidding me? My shame is gone. It's out the window, right? It's out the window. And tickets to the game, too. Yeah. It's cool because I'm walking on after we win. Let's get these predictions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to week two of the NFL season. We're going to start with, with some predictions. We go Sunday morning games, Sunday night, Monday night, and we'll probably have Thursday at some point. But uh, we're just going to go with the Sunday and Monday games here. So first off, on the slate, I just took this off of ESPN. I'm not showing bias here. Gentlemen, uh, it is the Las Vegas Raiders against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, right now, they're opening up at 6.5 points uh, against the Steelers, so minus 6.5 on the Steelers, over under a 47. Who you boys got? Let's start with you, Siggy. Under Raiders. Under Raiders. Over Pittsburgh. Over Pittsburgh. Um, <clears throat> Vegas money line, obviously, and over. 
Uh, I want the under on Pittsburgh this week. Under on Pittsburgh. Oh, you know, I'm, I think I'm digging the over with Pittsburgh. Over with Pittsburgh. Gotcha. Yeah, we're Pittsburgh's running a little bit long here. Back home, 20, 21, I think is my score. Anyways. So, yeah, sorry. We are going to kind of just zoop through these just because yeah. we did run a little bit later than uh, we wanted to originally, and we got games to watch, boys. Yeah, just like the rest of you. Yep. Guys. So, uh, number two, we got the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Chicago Bears. Uh, they're going to give Chicago uh, minus two and a half and an over-under of 45. I'll start this one. I actually Vaughn, think the Bengals. I just read that Fields is expected to have a lot larger role in this next game. I'm still going to go with the Bengals. I'm still going with yeah. the Bengals. I'm going with the Bengals as well, but that Fields thing is interesting. Yeah. Bengals, but over. But over. Bengals and over. Bengals and over. I just don't trust golf, dude. Yep. Yeah, definitely Bengals over for sure. I don't know, Siggy. You're going to be the outlier here? Actually, you know what? I'll, and over. I'll take the outlier here. and I'm going to go Chicago over. Chicago over. Chicago okay. Over. I think we're all going the over. I like that 45 low. Yeah. 45 is low. Moving next, we almost got a two tutter split. We got the Houston Texans versus the Cleveland Browns. The Tyrod Taylor revenge game, uh, <laughs> as they are going to go minus 13 against Cleveland and an over under a 48. So with you, Andrew, who you got? Dude, I think Houston is covering plus 13. I'm yep. not gonna lie. I, I, I honestly I, I, think so. I, you know, I know that team's kind of a train wreck, but Tyrod Taylor. He was meant for this. <laughs> I'm gonna I think Houston covers as well. Mm -hmm. I do. I think two touchdowns is a lot to give to a team. I don't. I disagree. Uh, I think I'm, I'm seeing this game as a blowout, and I think Cleveland's gonna take that yeah, probably on the Cleveland, over. Cleveland. Cleveland always plays to their team's like skill level. Anytime that you think yep. Cleveland should have an this, easy this win, is, they win by three points. This is a That's a fair Anytime this is that they should have a game team. that you think that they're gonna lose, this is different. You know, this you know, is, is, they is lose by three I'm, points, I'm, or they win that fucker. I'm taking Cleveland with. I'm taking Cleveland in the spread, probably the under. Um, just the sole fact, like I had mentioned earlier, though, Cleveland took a tough loss last week on the road to Kansas City. They're going to come out fucking high. You know yeah. with Cleveland, we get that game every year where you're going to see both Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt pull a couple tutties. I bet this, this is, is that this one. Game. Okay. Oh, Bold. Yeah. All right, moving on to your game of the week. we got the Rams minus 3.5 against the Indianapolis Colts over under 48. Who you got, Sig? Rams minus 3.5. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's trying to jinx him. Yeah, he's he's, to to him. Him. he's uh, like he's like win-win situation. If I'm right, I think I'll I take win. the Colts on the spread with the over. Oh, yeah. on this one, actually. Rams under. Uh, I I feel secure on the Rams, but over under, I'm not sure. That's pretty. That's, uh, that's only four touchdowns. Like. Oh, this would be a good teaser for under, actually. Or I, I want to go under 48, I think. I still, that, that Colts defense and that Rams defense are both really respectable. All right. Andrew? Uh, definitely Rams under. Rams I don't under. I the Colts really scoring too much today. I'm sorry. Gotcha. Rams is close. Yep. But I think they can Give me a couple of tidies. Give me closer to that. I don't think he's going to throw pick. He's playing Ramsey. Yeah. Dalton Ramsey. didn't throw him last week. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Up. Buffalo, uh, Miami. Over under 47 and a half, three points to Buff. They're dogging Buffalo, I think, after last I week. Am, against I the agree. Steelers. I think Absolutely. so. But we did see that they do not have Miami a fucking running over. game. What? Miami, Miami spread, spread over. over. Okay. I like Miami on a six point teaser, so I'm going to take Buffalo to cover three and then the over as well. I'm taking over in all these games. I'm just gonna take you Miami here. Uh, I like I like Miami the with the. Uh, they do have a low over under this week though. Uh, for the morning. I like Miami to keep Buffalo on the on the underdog side of things. Um, I don't like the 47 and a half though. Uh, I'm gonna take Miami on the under. Yeah, I don't know actually. Uh, Buffalo, you know, they got something to prove right here with Miami. They got to set the division straight pretty early this year because you know Miami could. Miami could, could take the division. They could. If they, they start if off they say hot. season 2-0 oh, against division opponents. So I'm going to take Buffalo and over. I think I'm going to go Buffalo over, too. Um, I stuck my foot in my mouth last week with the Steelers game. I'm going to double down on my mistake, though. I do think Buffalo is that team this year. Slow start. I still buy them. I'm giving them a break off last week, and I'm going to go. Uh, I think they covered the minus 3. I think they go over 47 and a half. Staying in the division, though, we got a couple of AFC East matchups. The first one, obviously, we just covered. The second one is going to be New England, minus six versus the Jets with an over-under of 43. So uh, we'll start with our resident Pats fan. That's easy money. New England covers, and it's over, for sure. I think easy cover on this spread for New England, and then I'm going to take the under. 
We'll see necessarily in a shootout. I'm going to agree with that. New England can cover that. No I problem. I think this but is Mac's breakout game. I think That's we're going to see three tutties out of Mac at least. Damian Harrison might get one. Jacoby Myers is going to be running some good I think New England's going to eat. I'm taking but the gonna... over and New England money on. I think New England under. I think you saw the Jets last week not Money perform very well offensively. Um, yeah, against the Panthers. So I don't think they're going to fare too well. Matt Good Jones could come out and they could have five, six touchdowns as an offense. It It'd be 42 nothing yeah. with an over under of 43. I'm taking the under. All right. So that's I think that's how it plays out this week. I think the Jets, I love Robert Sala. I hope to God uh, the freaking, um, what is it, Woody Johnson's their owner. I hope to God that family gives him time to build something in uh-huh. New York, but it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time with that roster. Well, that Pat's team. secondary is a little, a little troubled right now. Mm-hmm. So you know you can't. You know you could see. What Zach is it? Wilson. Bill Belichick they is. A, a, they don't have a single yeah. draft pick. Uh, I think on that roster this year. Like at one point they had no cornerbacks that they their drafted. Biggest, and their biggest yeah. pick in 2020 is nowhere to be seen as of yet. Basically, he does feel a little bit. Better. Another thing for this game, like I mentioned earlier, though, is Belichick against your rookie quarterback. Yep. Yeah, there's easy money. Yep. New Orleans, Carolina. Three and a half to New Orleans, 44 and a half over under. New Orleans, over. Jabo wins. Hammered. Carolina, over. It's kind of hard to hate on Jameis right now, but I I love the Matt Roll project, both the punk band from the early 2000s and what's going on in Carolina. I think I'm going to take Carolina Marshall Moore. against the spread, but I think it's a close one. I do think New Orleans wins, but they go over. I'm liking New Orleans on the over here. You know, I think I'm going to take uh, hmm, probably Carolina on the on the spread, and it's going to be an under. Hmm, there we go. All right, moving on. We got De- Je- uh, Denver minus six versus Jacksonville. Over under a 45. Um, I'm going to pick Denver to cover this. Under. Hammer I don't think Jacksonville Denver scores. Spread. Yeah. Hammer Denver hard, honestly. Denver's right up here. Yeah. Yep. Jacksonville. Yeah. You're crazy. Ooh, Jacksonville gosh. spread or Jacksonville up? Ooh, uh, I'll take Jacksonville spread. Jacksonville, Jacksonville spread, Jacksonville, Jacksonville spread. minus six, but you pick uh, Denver to win. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Denver spread and I, I, I'll give it the over. I'm sure there'll be a I'm sure it'll be a late game shootout. I think Trevor I like Trevor Lawrence, Lawrence a lot. I don't like Urban Meyer, but I, I think Jacksonville's gonna get in somewhere. He's yeah. gonna start chucking if he doesn't want to be coaching at USC next year. Yeah. Minnesota Arizona. All right, we got yeah. So the over unders were all like under fifty, and then you, you, you go to the afternoon games and the evening games, all over fifty until Monday night. So we got Minnesota, Arizona. They're giving Arizona three and a half points. They got fifty <laughs> and a half over under for that game. Arizona spread over hammered you Arizona spread under. Arizona spread over. I That's think Minnesota's Arizona offense is still that team. That's pretty right easy. I'm going to take yeah. Arizona, Arizona spread over, yeah. but Minnesota's going to put up some yeah. points. Yeah. You got Dalvin, you got JJ, you got Thielen. I think that's Overall, still a challenge. Arizona Arizona spread over. You think the under? Arizona's defense is stout as fuck, though. Yeah. Isaiah Simmons, Buda Baker, JJ Watch. Kyler Murray's going to win MVP, though, this year. He's going to throw That was going to be my bold prediction. So, I think Murray for MVP this year, honestly. Here we go, second over under. Uh, we got 52 in this game going Atlanta versus Tampa Bay, 12 and a half points against Tampa Bay. Um, honestly, I'll take Tampa and I'll Tampa take under. Spread under. Tampa spread under, yeah. Tampa spread under, I yeah. want to fuck around and take the Falcons spread. It's just such a weird That's game tough. to me. Because it's one of those where you think, I mean, they should obviously defeat them by 35, but. Well, everybody's dogging uh, what they gave a touchdown t- uh, to the Cowboys mm-hmm. on uh, the opening night, and it was a two point game, so. You never know what's going to happen. Any given Sunday, boys. Any see given Sunday. Pitts this week? I don't know. I'm just joking. I'm just going to take Atlanta spread to go against the, go against the odds here. He just, he's just fucking opposite picking at this point. K. Seglin. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever compare. Don't shoot. Yeah. This this game's one of the most intriguing ones on the list for me because I want I I want to see Atlanta bounce back. You know, especially in a divisional game like this. I I'm kind of looking for a shootout here. Uh, I don't I don't know if we go over 52, but I'm thinking we see a lot of passing yards in this game. I want to take Tampa Bay under 52, but I don't like that 12 and a half points. So Atlanta spread with Tampa Bay pick? Yeah. Gotcha. How about for you, Andrew? Uh, yeah, I figured uh, Tampa Bay probably uh, 12 and a half covers on that, and it'll be the it'll be the over, I think. I'm sure Tom Brady's going to come out and stroke it again, so. Throwing it out there. Next one, we got Dallas versus the Chargers. They're giving three and a half against the Chargers, minus three and a half. So favoring L.A. there over under a 55. This one could very well be a shootout. You got Dallas Herbo, you got over. Dak. Dallas spread over. Okay. I'm, I'm riding with it. 
Like I said, um, Dallas made a statement against Tampa Bay on yeah. the road opening night. Actually, Dallas straight up over. Dallas straight up. I think Dallas wins this game. I'm gonna, Spread just keeps me low. I know. I'm going to follow and say Dallas covers that. They're going to go over 55. I'm going to say Dallas over. And uh, you can get Amari Cooper on a anytime touchdown score. Slap that for sure. Let's do it. Moving on, we got Tennessee and Seattle. Disrespect in Tennessee. Six and a half points against Seattle, over under 54. Who you boys got? Tennessee's got to come out hot this week, and I think they, they do. do just that. I think under Tennessee spread. I think uh, that defense, that defensive end from Tennessee, Darrell Taylor, really balled out last week, and I think he's going to continue to do the same for Seattle this week. So we're going to be taking Seattle spread over. Okay. I got Tennessee spread under. Like at Seattle's offense this year, and I'm thinking that Der- uh, Derrick Henry's on the decline, looking for a lot of Bobby Wagner spies in this game. So let's take Seattle straight up. Uh, I'm going to go under 54. I'm mm-hmm. going to take uh, Tennessee covering over Seattle uh, and under that for sure. All right, Maybe moving the game. moving on here. We got uh, your boys, Chief, three and a half points. Against Baltimore, over under 54 and a half. So you got the Chiefs winning by more than four. <coughs> Chiefs four more. spread over hammer. I was about to say man. Chiefs spread over, I think. I think after seeing what Baltimore did last week against the Raiders, uh, John Gruden cherry picks a lot from the Chiefs offense. Deservedly so. Andy Reid's a fucking genius. A lot genius. of people have. Oh, no, I mean, have, yeah. yeah. As, as I talked about last week with the almost horizontal offense that goes along the horizontal vertical offense. Yeah. A lot of people have stolen that, and I think a lot of what we did with the crossing routes last week with their injured secondary – it's going to work well for Kansas City, so I got the over. Nicole Hardman should have a touchdown this week, too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think all KC over. Yeah, KC over for that. Yeah. That one's easy here. I don't I don't like the way Baltimore looks so far. Yeah. Next, last but certainly not least, is Sig puts on the fanny pack. No, 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 no. Sig puts on the that's, fanny pack. That's dude. Monday night, and we are missing a game from Sunday. We are. With the disrespect. Oh, shit. Oh, goddamn. Yeah. All right. Hold Eagles on. and, yeah. You missed Philly and San Diego. <laughs> yeah, we definitely did. You guys already know where I'm going with that one. I'm taking Philly, Philly's. money line, all day. We've got, looks like the spread's negative three for San Fran. Over under is 49 points here. Hell, I'll take Philly spread over Philly under. Philly money line under. Uh, I don't know there. Um, San Francisco over, for sure. I'm taking San Francisco on the over. I don't like the spread. Um, 49 points is low for this game. I'm expecting this to be a shootout. And Mike, Sh- uh, Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan with the 49ers is not the guy to scheme against the way the Eagles schemed against Atlanta last week. Um, San Francisco is going to take this one. We're going to move on to an easy two. Take a look at that. At that, I think uh, sure that's uh, they're going to cover that that spread. It's going to be an easy game. I don't see Nick Sirianni coming out and giving the Niners any sort of trouble. Let's be honest. We're back home in Philly, baby. But to end it off, we got Detroit versus Green Bay in Lambeau. Green Bay's got 11 and a half points yeah. over under at 48. <laughs> um, Green Bay's. I mean, I think they're going to come out and make a statement. I think they have to. I, they, yeah, definitely. I would say Green Bay would, spread under. I, this is for sure. I think over actually because the Darius Smith is out as well, so they're not going to have a need of the push, passing it's, attack. It's easy, easy uh, back on track game for Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to get memed again. Aaron Rodgers prime time football. He just had the worst game of his career last week. Devontae started out zero two before. Darius Slay cannot lock down Devontae Adams like Marshawn Lattimore can. Oh, he's in Philly now though. Oh, you're right. You're right. And they, they just have lost, to they just lost Jeff Yeah. They just lost They Fakuda. just lost Fakuda. Yeah, um, I'm, right. I, I like yeah. Green Bay a lot. Green Bay Cover no problem. Over. over 48. I'm expecting a pretty solid ass beat. Yeah, same. Green Bay over. Cover. And for you, Cole? I'm going to jump on here. We'll end the uh, episode end it on out here. Let's end it on out, boys. All right, as I slip underneath the table, scoped on out there. Ladies and gentlemen, for the last two games... I'm riding with Lane on this one, I think. Uh, or who picked the Eagles? Yeah, you did. I'm riding with Lane. I'm riding with Lane. I'm going Eagles here. Um, no disrespect. I love you, Tyler. Thank you for last minute coming on the show here this morning. Yeah. But goddamn, man, I just fly, Eagles fly. I want them to be good so bad. Everything about this team is lovable, besides their fans. Besides <laughs> That's their just fans. Philly. That's just Philly. Besides their fans. So I love the Eagles. I do think we the love Packers, you, Chris Lee. The real Chris Lee. The real Chris Lee. Shout out. 
Prayers oh with you, boy. Um, but yeah, honestly, I think the Eagles win this week, and then I also think the Packers they cover the points there. Um, I'm gonna go with over two, just because honestly, with that defense, I do think the Lions. Last week they showed a lot of grit trying to come back. I don't think they actually did. I think your defense is a lot better than that. They just you know, you know, recover points. It's like you know, or catch up speed, and like they have in the fucking Need for Speed games when you go in like two ten when you're a lap behind yep. in, a, in a fucking like Toyota Corolla. Not happening. But yeah. Thank you for all for stopping yeah. back by. Thank you. Week Thank two. you, everybody. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Threat October. Go ahead and sign up for that. Hit up Siglin for more information Threat on that. October. He's going to be uh, posting more info as we go with that. As well, shout out Mike Pyle. Um, as well, we do have a official date for the debut of Spooky Intel, the new oh, podcast new that is podcast joining the brand. Soon. So, Wednesday, October 4th. 13th, not the 31st. Flip your dates around. Wednesday, October 13th, Spooky Intel is going to be launching. It's going to be Kylie um, Harrison. Hit me up about it. She's going to be the host of the podcast. Tony Robertson's also there as well. Awesome. And then a good friend of ours, Corey Armour, joined their first pod. Uh, so we have that recorded. We're in editing right now. We will be dropping on the 13th. Honestly, it's going to be an awesome show. I'm They're excited. hilarious. They talk spooky, ghost stories, just kind of the creepy stuff with a funny twist. Um, and that's a big thing in podcasting right now. Honestly, like the the horror stories the creepy stories one of my favorite podcasts actually the favorite podcast that i featured on is the unethical podcast go check them out it's three canadians and a minnesotan talking about some uh, crazy shit you know whether it's murder stories serial killer stories we talk about body snatching and how it used to be legal for centuries so yeah go check it out support the brands but we do appreciate everybody and once again to you we're out